Hey guys, Chris the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. About actually longer than 12 months ago, I started a repair video on this 60s era champion spark plug advertising clock. You may have noticed it in the background of some of my videos. A lot's happened in those last 12 or 13 months. I've had to, I didn't know then I was going to have to move out of the shop and clear everything. I didn't know I was going to have shoulder surgery. Um, but I finally got back to this job and at the moment because I've only got one really useful arm I'm doing a lot of clock repairs and small repair videos so I hope you're enjoying those. I finally got a part for this clock so if you want to follow through from the start we'll cast you back to June 2021 and you can see my process on diagnosing and consequently repairing this video this clock not this video I shall see you at the other side of this original clip and we will finish off the job hey guys Chris from the ultimate recycler I got some stuff from an old shed lately which included this really cool advertising clock now I've got the, the movement and we'll look at that in a tick but this is probably from the 1960s it's actually plastic but it's a vintage plastic advertising stuff from garages or, or known as garage and is uh, really popular anything sign related um, is quite sought after champion were an extremely well-known brand of spark plugs and they've had quite a range of these clocks workshop clocks over the years this is a really nice one and i took the mechanism out of it and the whole thing was filthy dirty when i got it and this it's the original clock mechanism and it would probably date to the 60s as i said um, it is a battery movement but it's a vintage one and I put a battery in it and it didn't work. Now this was caked in dust. I cleaned up roughly, but it wasn't working. And I think if we get this clock in original condition and working, I would imagine it's going to be around about a $350 item. As it is not working, probably a couple of hundred. So it's worth trying to have a look to see if we can fix the original movement. We might make as well as an extra $100, $150. Now sure, I could put a modern quartz movement in there and probably still use the old hands and essentially it would be, well, no one would know once it was hanging on the wall but I like to keep things original. I don't really want to have to throw this out. We'll see if we can fix it. It appears to be undamaged and I can't see any obvious corrosion on the terminals. I did just rub a little bit of sandpaper on that one. But I put a new battery in or a good battery and it wasn't going to go at all. So. I'm going to take it home to my workshop, we'll pull it apart and we'll just see if we can actually fix it and get this clock back to original, back working and it'll be a beautiful feature in my shop and I will price it up, I reckon about $350, maybe $375. So we'll take this home and we'll do some investigating. Okay, most clock movement issues when they're battery movements are corrosion problems. Uh, usually the batteries are left in them after they go flat and the corrosion the terminals suffer badly from corrosion sometimes it actually tracks into the movement and mucks up the connections now this one as i have mentioned isn't overly bad there's a little bit of surface rust on there but i did clean it up and it seemed to connect well this end looks okay which is a positive battery end so i had put a battery in and there's a little start flick mechanism here uh, and all that is is a bit of spring steel it just stops a little wheel turning and when you flick it across it actually gives the wheel a bit of a kick start i did that a couple of times with the battery in and it started to tick and then it stopped so it's got an issue inside so we'll have a, a bit of a play see if we can fix it it looks like it's just two screws to get it apart and that's got those two out now i like to encourage people to have a go at fixing things uh, as i usually say Look, this wasn't working. You're never going to take it to a tradie to try and have fixed. Uh, where would you find someone that would fix these things anyway? Uh, so what's the options? If it doesn't work, do you just throw it out? If you're going to throw it out, you might as well have a go at fixing it first. And then you'll either have success or you'll just have lots of small parts to throw out instead of one big item. So you've really got nothing to lose. And it's amazing what you can learn by having a look. So... I can't see anything else that holds that together so we'll see if that comes apart it feels very firm but um, I reckon that should be all that's holding it so we might just try and 
gently pry perhaps under here without doing any damage now there we go that's opened it up yep we've got a, a seam starting to open now it's important to be patient on these jobs there we go all right now what's going on in here it seems to be oh it looks like this part comes off okay so the movement stays in that part there's the mechanism and by the looks of that the negative terminal for the battery travels through here and that's a spring-loaded contact that presses on this pad on the circuit board now there's no corrosion there I was expecting to see some corrosion somewhere so I'm not sure why it's not working now this is the wheel here that that spins back and forward and that feels nice and free and you can see there's a couple of magnets I'm not sure if you can see there's a couple of magnets in on the inside of that wheel that pass over a coil which is magnetized through the circuitry so that will attract and then turn off and attract and turn off and basically give a rocking motion that's in very simple terms but that's how this one works so that's nice and free it appears there's going to be no troubles with that ticking but something may be going on with the um, the energy to the coil or there may be something binding up the plastic gears in here that drive eventually drive the hands it won't need very much friction in the gear train to stop this because it's only a very minor magnetic force so there's a possibility that there's maybe just some grease on these gears has bound them up and it won't keep ticking uh, probably the first thing to check is I will apply some power 1.5 volts I'll get my power supply out and we'll go onto that pad and onto this the positive is the main frame that's the negative and we'll just see if we can actually get it to run off my power supply if it doesn't continue to run there we either have a problem in the circuitry or I'll be looking at the uh, gears in here to see if that's bound up okay we have 1.5 volts it's massive overkill having this great big power supply just to provide battery charge but it's the easiest way to hook it up I can give that little wheel a flick and I can hear it trying to tick a bit and then stops almost straight away. So where does that leave us? Well, I think because we can't see any corrosion in there, I think the electrics are actually going to be okay. I'm leaning now to more towards the, um, the plastic gear train in here. And this clock actually does have a second hand that runs through a little shaft in the middle. And that needs to move fairly freely so I suspect that it may have had some dust down here and it may have just gummed up or perhaps it had some grease put in there from new and it's dried out remembering that it's well 50 60 years old now so um, we'll see if we can get into that mechanism and maybe give a bit of a clean up and some a drop of oil or something see if we can free things up all right so I've just taken that little time adjust knob off and I think the movement will now slide out of this casing hopefully there we go and you can see there's the little lever that's the stop start lever and all that does is just have a little tang of metal that either stops this wheel turning or gives it a flick so that's how that works all right now there's some plastic gears it looks like a little brass gear in there as well uh, it's probably designed to run dry being mostly plastic but i'm thinking the shaft through the middle the second hand shaft might be binding things up so there's a nut there that and that little spring steel piece provides a bit of tension on the back of the spindle there's a little bit of movement in and out so it will move up and down a little bit but I'm thinking we'll probably spray some contact cleaner in there just to remove any grime perhaps remove any old grease uh, I don't want to spray a lot of 
I don't want to spray CRC or something in there just willy-nilly. That tends to gum up clock movements and do more damage than good. So I'll just try and wash it out with a little bit of contact cleaner first, I think. Uh -huh, I've made a little discovery. I put the, the time adjust knob back on so I could turn it, just thinking I'd turn the movement around a bit. And it's quite tight. In fact, I don't want to force it. I think it'll strip the gear. So something in there has bound up. Uh, so any wonder the uh, the little magnet setup couldn't drive anything because I can't even turn it with my fingers here. I'm sure if I force that too far, it's going to start breaking plastic cogs. So something's jammed up. We'll try and get some spray in there and try and free it up a bit. I don't really want to pull the thing apart any further. Although that plate will come off there. And there's quite a few little gears in there. But yeah, I think it's worth doing. I think I'll take a couple of photos. And I'll take that knob back off. And I'll undo these screws and just lift that plate off. We may have a few loose cogs for a moment. But I'm pretty sure that it won't be too hard to put back it together. And then we can just make sure it's nice and clean then. Now they're very tiny little nuts. I'm using pliers because they shouldn't be very tight. That's, they're going to undo beautifully. So they're little brass nuts, I think they're brass. So I've just taken a heap of photos. We'll take the last little nut off there and this little spring steel piece that just held the end of that little shaft there. Um, so that should be all to get off that part. Uh, it has a little worm drive gear here which drives on the shaft oh, it's actually not a worm drive it's just a little sprocket type setup i think that shaft spinning back and forward allows the the little ratchet wheel to click past i'm not sure of the actual clock terms it will have a specific name all right let's get this plate off and hopefully we don't have too much of a mess okay sorry about that the um the camera went flat just as I was getting that plate off. So I just removed this um, shaft, which was the uh, time adjust shaft. And that was poking through the plate, as you saw. And the plate just lifted straight off. Now the sprockets and gears have uh, little steel shafts and then plastic gears. So the where the steel shafts go through the plates, they'll need to be lubricated. Uh, nothing else has actually fallen off yet which is good. I don't like things just falling off. Uh, we can take these spaces off. We're much better off taking things off. Uh, it's magnetized. Much better off taking things off than having them fall on a in a pile on the bench and then having to sort out where they all go. Okay, so we'll just remove one piece at a time and have a good look at where they go. Uh, it looks like this center cog, the shaft goes right through. And that will probably be the second hand. This little idler gear here. Well, it's not so much an idler, it's just a different stage cog. And there's two separate pieces on that. Um, what I want to do is actually disconnect the gear train from this driving part and then we'll see we'll apply some power and see if this actually oscillates as it should and that will conclude definitely that there is extra um, extra friction in the gear train which is causing the issues so this one can't come off but maybe the top gear will slip off the shaft i'm not sure we'll try with these tweezers and we'll see if it'll lift off the shaft uh, it looks like it's going too nicely. In fact, that's the second. All right. That's the shaft that drives the second hand. It goes right through the middle. So that's obviously free. And now that we've got that out, we can apply some voltage because oh, this little piece will probably come out now. Now there's a little spring wire there as well. So we'll have to be careful of that and take note of where it goes. I'm not sure if you can see it on 
through the camera just a little spring wire I think it must work against this little cog, cog here so we've removed this little cog and we've actually now isolated the drive mechanism from what's left of the clock part the movement and now we should be able to actually test to see if the electrics work so I've got my voltmeter here again we'll hook that up the negative went to a tab on the back of that circuit board that should be connecting the positive went to the frame the main chassis and if we give it a little bit of a flick there we go look at that so the electrics are perfectly fine that's running beautifully so we now know that the problem is definitely in those gears and there presumably just was a bit too much friction for the thing to work i haven't noticed anything damaged so i will lubricate all the um the pivot points where the metal runs on metal and we'll just make sure that this second hand goes right down through that that hole there and make sure that's nice and free so uh, once we get the gears right and back in and lubricated our clock should be running oh houston we have a problem i uh, just removed this section here which i'll do again now to make sure everything was clean and, and able to be lubed and this metal shaft comes out and that's all fine but what i noticed and what i'll show you now is this plastic gear underneath has some issues some major issues um, i might even suggest they're non-repairable issues that should pull out that's just actually the for the hour hand and look at that gear if we can stay in focus i would suggest that this had played up it had got tight and someone turned the our adjuster like I was going to do with my fingers earlier and I felt that it was too tight I think someone had forced it and they've broken gears broken cogs or teeth off that gear now I can't do anything about that because it's actually missing some so all I can do is put this in a box keep the the um the photos I took of it I might just slip this movement back together the the main part it's probably a better idea is I'll just quickly reassemble it and uh, I'm going to have to look out for another one of these movements and see if I can find another cog for it. Well here we go guys back in present time which would be August 22 rather than June 21. Here's my bagged up parts. I didn't end up reassembling the movement I just put them all in a bag so that's where we left the movement last time you well just what you've previously seen and I happened to find a fairly plain looking Jungmann's electronics electronic clock of the same vintage with an almost identical movement. The casing was slightly different, but the movement itself was identical. Now this had bad corrosion, as you can see there. Also the door glass was broken and it's a very plain looking clock anyway. So I thought, fantastic. A great donor let's get out the cog hopefully it's the same and we'll fix our original one so I've dismantled this this morning and I've just discovered that the gear or the if that's the offending broken one and this is the equivalent out of this movement it appears to be identical I've lined the teeth up it's the same number of teeth the same physical dimensions in every aspect that I can tell except it's a metal version so one can only assume that perhaps they were aware, the company was aware that there was a problem with the plastic gearing and they upgraded in re more recent models. So what to do now? Well, I think I could swap those out and put the metal one in the original movement. However, upon closer inspection, this particular piece where I think that's where those gears mesh against, if we look at the corresponding piece from the old movement, it has where are we? It has a plastic little gear under there. So there's plastic running against plastic. And I don't think I should put plastic to metal. So what I'm going to do, I have tested the electronics 
the uh, electromagnetic oscillator on this movement here and it works fine everything looks absolutely perfect on here i'm going to rebuild this one with the metal gearing and the original movement we will save for parts down the track and i know that that electronics there is okay as well we will put this movement though back in this casing and then we can reassemble it back into the clock so we'll, we ha we will have essentially the upgraded version with the metal gears of that same movement so i've dismantled this i'll clean it i'll oil it and we'll reassemble it and hopefully if all goes well we shall have an operational champions advertising spark plug clock so the first stage in the rebuild is a cleanup uh, what i've done is i've cleaned all the parts and the base here the actual frame I have used uh, IPA isopropyl alcohol with a, a cotton bud and also a very sharp little uh, toothpick to clean out all the little um, pivot holes. They're very tiny but the toothpick does get into them and there was quite a lot of old dried oil we got out of those so it's now nice and clean. I have also rinsed the parts in IPA and given them a little bit of a blow off with some compressed air so they all should be pretty good nice and clean and ready to assemble and then we'll oil it i have my little uh, clock oil here with a very fine oiler because we don't want to over oil the movement i mentioned many a times that the biggest problem with clock repairs with people that aren't sure what they're doing is they put too much oil on it so we'll start assembling it with a little bit of oil on each part as we go okay time for some voiceover work I'm going to show you the assembly um, and as I oil each piece, I'm using a watch oil, a good quality synthetic watch oil, uh, and it's really required for these sort of movements. So I've just put the new metal hour hand hour cog in and making sure it seats. And I really need to oil all the parts where metal contacts metal except for the teeth of the cogs you don't you don't oil the teeth on any clock uh, the, the gears are either brass or plastic and then they do not require oiling you'll just end up with too much oil so that was the minute uh, cog there and i usually as i assemble each cog i usually use the tweezers just to make sure that everything's free and it seats properly uh, this little bridge goes over here to hold those together uh, a good quality pair of tweezers is essential when you're working on small things like this and it's very satisfying how things click together they're beautifully made the Germans certainly made some uh, quality stuff over the centuries well certainly in recent times I guess um, so yeah I'm just putting a little tiny dot of oil like I've got special uh, watch oilers as you can see here just in each little pivot point before I assemble the particular item that goes there uh, this is a little i don't know what you'd call it it's it's kind of a like a worm drive cog but it's not actually a worm drive and it just allows the oscillator to transfer the power into the actual clock movement uh, these this gear assembly on this side was very fiddly to install um, because one shaft went through both of these plastic gears I did assemble it this way for a start and then I took it out and put it back in together so I didn't show all that I just sort of cut to each section on this video um, but it was quite fiddly I won't lie to you uh, it didn't quite go together as smoothly as what you're seeing now and this long shaft as we've mentioned is the actual second hand and that pretty well completes the drive train of all the cogs uh, then there's a couple of spaces to go on here before we put the top plate on and the plate did take a lot of jostling to get everything lined up again i just showed it being basically installed and dropping into place it never quite goes like that in reality but you know you can you can get it right and when you get things home just check that they don't wobble and i always check as here i always check that everything's free and there's nothing binding up the last thing you want to do is uh, do up the screws or the nuts and have something not actually in its uh, right spot and you will bend something or damage something then once we're satisfied with that we just put a drop of oil in each of the little pivot holes uh, and as i said a drop it's actually smaller than a drop it's just enough to to suck into the pivot and it won't allow anything to droop out and that's when you're going to cause more problems if you have too much oil 
I put the nuts on. I managed to get them on without dropping any on the floor. Trouble is with brass nuts is if you drop them, you can't find them with a magnet. Uh, and then the last thing to do was just to lubricate the shaft for the oscillator. I didn't actually take this assembly apart. And this end, you have to be very careful with oil around the hairsprings. You should never get any oil on a hairspring. It will totally muck up its timing. So uh, that's all together now. So then we take it out of the vise and have a good look over it. Make sure it's all secure and everything works and is, you know, not bound up. This uh, is the adjuster to remove the hands. And I was going to mention... You're always better to use this adjuster on the back of a clock to move the hands to set the time rather than actually physically move the hands on the front of the clock. There may have been a chance that that actually caused this damage in the first place. So again, this is what we tried to do earlier in the video and it would not turn at all. Uh, and I just made sure that I could actually turn it and everything rotated as you can see there. So I was pretty confident with success at this stage. All right, I've just screwed the movement back into the case. Uh, even though this casing is slightly different to the other one, the actual movement's identical, uh, except for those metal uh, gears, as you saw. So it all went together well. I've screwed it back into the case. Uh, I've made sure that everything moves freely and all the gears, nothing seems to be jammed. So it's time for a test. Let's get some leads and power it up. Okay, we have negative on this side. I have my power supply set to 1.5 volts. Positive on this side. Well, actually, the, the whole chassis is positive. Let's go in here. Uh, we'll switch our power supply on. And we'll give the mechanism a kick start. There we go, that's running. Continuing to oscillate, very nice indeed. I can hear the faintest of ticks. You actually probably hear a few other clocks in my room ticking in the background, so you won't be able to make out anything. Uh, right, so the oscillator's going, but let's make sure the gear train is all correct and all operating. The easiest way to do that is to grab the second hand and just push it into the onto the middle shaft like so and there we go look at that move fantastic always extremely satisfying to bring these things back to life so we can now uh, fit the cover back over just make sure the terminals for the battery are clean they're pretty good uh, in fact 12 months ago I think I gave them a little bit of an emery so they should be fine and we'll put it back into the clock housing and admire our work. Very easy job, of course, to put it back into the housing. It's basically just one retaining nut on the outside. I've got a battery in there. I had set it to 6 p.m. And it's already done five minutes since I set it. How good does that look? So I haven't cleaned the hands. I haven't gone out of my road to clean the actual clock other than just a bit of a wash because a quick browse on eBay shows that there's so many, the place is flooded with reproductions and they're an exact replica of this one. There's a few other sorts. Uh, they're selling at $150 for a reproduction. They do claim in the listing, I was reading one just earlier, they do claim that they're an exact replica. And yes, the artwork does look the same but they say they require two AA batteries, so I know that there's a cheap Chinese movement behind them. This one has the original German movement. I like that the hands are showing a little bit of oxidization. There's some scuffs, and, you know, it it just looks genuine, which it is, of course. You know, coming from a garage, probably somewhere in the 60s, may have done two or three or four decades as workshop service, and then failed, ended up in storage, and we now have it back to life. So very happy with that. Yet another successful clock repair, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. This one took over 12 months in the making. Uh, I'm going to put it in the shop. I'm probably going to price it up around 450 Sometimes with these things, I'd actually like to enjoy them for a while. And sometimes if someone comes in and buys it first weekend, it's a bit disappointing. But well worth spending the extra time on it. Um, 
and yeah there you go and i've also have a bag full of uh parts um and we know the oscillator works on the other one and most of the gears are okay except for the broken plastic one the casing on the other one wasn't much good but i'll file those parts away because they're also going to suit the human starburst clocks and those sort of 60s era german clocks so the parts might be helpful in the future anyway thanks for watching guys I'll probably do a few more clock repair videos and small tinkering jobs because it's easier with my shoulder just to do little jobs. Um, and it's very satisfying. And while the weather's a bit crappy, it's nice to sit in my little workshop room and do these jobs. So we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.